reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when it looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, giving it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed. For justice, but heart the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
bless the Lord to go and bear fruit that will remain. Issues 
that are to be informed by this understanding of the right to life. Most familiar to Catholics is probably the issue of abortion. The United States has the highest abortion rate of any modern Western nation. There are approximately 19 and a half abortions for every thousand births. That means there are over 1.2 million abortions in the United States every single year. Every year about 2% of women between the ages of 15 and 44 have an abortion. And by the age of 45, the average of one-third of American women have experienced at least one abortion. Although most women wouldn't advertise that they've had an abortion, many still suffer from the emotional and psychological trauma that comes from having an abortion. And so, while the church speaks out against abortion, trying to prevent the killing of innocent babies in the womb, it also reaches out to women who have had abortions in order to help heal them. If we look at the nations around the globe, we see that in China, its government had imposed a policy of one child for one family for many, many years. And in the Chinese culture, males are valued more highly than females because they carry on the family name and they have the ability to earn money for the parents. And so, when it comes time to choose which one child you'll keep, unfortunately, it is the girls who are most often aborted. And so, instead of abortion being the touted key to freedom for women, it makes women victims in China. It doesn't liberate women in China, but it causes them to be the losers. Even the elderly within China question the policy, because as they get older and older, they see that there are fewer young people to help take care of the elderly. And so this one decision to limit the births through abortion has caused a total upset from the top of society and the elderly down to the newest of the Chinese children, the babies. Choices that go against the natural law have a profound effect on society. When we look at the church's teaching on other things related to the right to life, we see that, for example, something that may appear to be good is often touted as being revolutionary has as a detrimental side effect the violation of the right to life. For example, in vitro, for, in vitro fertilization. It is touted as a miracle way of allowing people who can't have children to have children. And that sounds like a wonderful thing. But what people aren't told is that when ovum are fertilized, produce an embryo, only a certain number of those can be used. And so more are fertilized than actually are become implanted. And what happens to those extras? They're discarded. Those are human lives who are being discarded. And so what seems like a good thing on the surface turns out to be morally wrong. The same thing goes for embryonic stem cell research. Using embryos for research for developing genetic changes seems like a good way, seems like a good idea, a way of curing many illnesses. And yet, to perform an evil act that is discarding and damaging and killing human embryos can never be justification for the good of creating new cures. In European countries, especially in Northern Europe, 
We have seen legislation that authorizes euthanasia, the so-called mercy killing. And that has caused profound negative effects on society as well. I remember a story of a woman who was elderly who was absolutely terrified about going into the hospital. She was 80 plus years old, and she was afraid that if she went to the hospital, she would be euthanized. It took all that her doctor could do to persuade her to go to the hospital to get the treatment that she needed. Unfortunately, in the, in the nighttime when the doctor couldn't be there, the doctor who was on shift made the decision that he needed her bed. And so she was euthanized against her will. And so when we see the potential harm that can come from the disrespect for life, we have to take pause and think about it. Why do we bring this up? We bring this up so we understand what is at stake when we talk about these different procedures that seem like a good thing, so that we can explain what is wrong with the proposed process or procedure. <coughs> St. John Paul II was a very strong advocate for, res for the respect for life from the moment of conception until natural death. We all remember how his health declined in his later years, how he had trouble walking. Even giving a blessing became difficult, and his speech became very impaired. Pope John Paul could have resigned. He could have stepped down, as Pope Benedict did. But Pope John Paul decided to persevere, and he decided to become a witness to the importance of all life. So that we would judge a person not by their physical capabilities, but who they are in the sight of God. So the church teaches us that while there are many important issues in society, such as poverty, immigration, health care, education, and so on, abortion really goes to the top of the list for, the, for our concern as Catholics because the consequences are so immediate. If you take away the right to life, any other right that you might have is meaningless. And so for those children who are aborted, they don't have to worry about being poor or educated. They don't have to worry about where they live or what kind of job that they have. They'll never have that choice because they were deprived of the right to life. In today's gospel, Jesus compares Israel to a vineyard. And the vineyard was entrusted to certain tenants who were expected to deliver produce from the harvest at the due time. And when the landowner sent people to collect their due, the tenants beat them, stoned them, and killed them. And finally, the landowner thought, I will send my own son. They will respect him. And we know from the parable that they did not. And as a consequence, when Jesus asked what will happen to those tenants who murdered the son of the landowner, they stated that the landowner will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at proper times. This idea of a vineyard is a metaphor for the kingdom of God. What does God expect from his vineyard? Produce. And what is the produce, the fruit that comes from the kingdom of God? Saints. Our job as Christians is to build up the kingdom by becoming saints ourselves and by helping others to do the same. And in many cases, that means telling an uncomfortable truth so that those who may be contemplating some of the procedures that I mentioned might understand what's at stake with respect to the right to life.
those who participate in abortion, euthanasia, stem cell research, and so on, are not only hurting human lives, they are hurting themselves and society as well. They are working against the kingdom of God, effectively denying God the harvest that is due. Every aborted child is a saint that was robbed of the ability to grow to Christian maturity on earth. They were robbed of the opportunity to experience life and to grow into the unique person that God meant them to be. They are the fruit that was not allowed to come to maturity. Every person who fails to respect life diminishes the kingdom of God. And at some point, every person will be asked to give an account. We Catholics must stand up, stand up as defenders of human dignity and the respect for life. We should be able to articulate why we believe what we believe. We should be able to tell people in a simple way why it is that we are opposed to abortion, to euthanasia to in vitro fertilization, to stem cell research that involves embryos. Some people might not fully grasp the moral argument. For them, perhaps we simply need to repeat the words from the preamble of the, the Declaration of Independence that we learned in grade school. Let's say we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, and that they are indulged by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.
for farmers, farm workers, and all who work the land, that they may work in safety and enjoy abundant crops as the harvest season continues. We pray to the Lord. For the team members and the attendees of the women's, women's renewal, which is going on this weekend, that the Lord might bless them all, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are ill, especially Carol Potai, Victoria Yorchek, Mitchell Quartz, Kay Buckies, Sandra Kupers, Michelle Hoffacker, Don Ludwig, and Marissa Poe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, and for those who have died, especially Alder Bernini, and also for Joan Jopko, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Dear Lord, please hear the prayers which have been spoken and the many intentions we have brought to Mass this evening. Not so much because we are deserving, but because of your love and your mercy. I grant these things through your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please turn in your gathered hymnals to number 726.
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Our communion hymn can be found in your missalette, song number 293. Receive the Lord. 
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we can sin through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to thank um, Deacon B for his message this evening. Uh, this is Respect Life Month, so uh, in the bulletin for the next five or six weeks will be, is and will be a small article about, about two pages, which I would ask you to read to keep. The issues are varied. The, the one for this week has to do with end of life issues. And we've all survived the, the trip down the birth canal, but the story isn't over because there are very frightening initiatives being made regarding end of life, as Bishop Mead, uh, or Bishop Deacon Mead indicated. So it's important to be educated, and everybody should have a file, or I'm suggesting they have a file of pertinent articles uh, that can help teach them, uh, what we what we believe about respecting life for our own edification and for those of others. Sometimes people will ask us questions. They understand that we go to church and we're Catholics and might be wondering about things. And also for our own welfare, so we know we have a good ground on which to make decisions. Um, next, um, uh, registered parishioner received a, a letter about uh, the ICC Foundation asking for contributions. Many of you have responded. I'm very grateful. As you can see, we've made a number of improvements on the property. Uh, the parking lot is the latest one. We're still working on the ramp. Um, there will be other things. So we have not yet had a chance to contribute to the ICC Foundation. Uh, we have um, a letter in the gathering area that uh, indicates what kind of thing we've done already with contributions uh, regarding capital projects. Finally, uh, we have uh, replaced the chairs in the Paris Center. Paris Center is a building uh, where we have our pancake breakfast and so forth. And, um, and the old chairs, which are still useful, we are putting on sale for, for very rock bottom prices. We're not trying to raise money with this, we're just trying to get rid of these old chairs, which are still good. If you're interested, uh, please see the bulletin and contact the parish office. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please turn in your gather hymnals to praise to the Lord, number 527. So my turn. 